Hey there, Tad Hargrave from MarketingForHippies.com here with a uh, puttering session story uh, from one of my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. And it's been a while, so I have to refer to my notes. But basically, a woman called me up and she said, um, yeah, I work with people who struggle with self-sabotage. And something in me had me ask, I said, well, are they coming to you saying, boy, I'm really struggling with self-sabotage? Are they aware of this, that they're self-sabotaging? And she said, no, definitely not. So this kind of kills the marketing dead. Uh, if you have a headline saying, do self-sabotage, and the people reading it don't realize they're self-sabotaging, that's it. It's over. That's the end of that conversation. So no, they weren't aware that they were sabotaging themselves. Now, if you have a diagnosis, something you know is true about your clients, let's say you think they have anger issues, but they're not aware of it. Um, you can't lead with that. So what you do is you step back and you say, okay, what are the consequences of having anger issues? What are the consequences of self-sabotaging? That's what I asked her. So what happens because they self-sabotage? She says, well, they don't bring innovative ideas to their clients, uh, to their consulting clients. I said, oh, okay, you didn't mention that. So they're consultants. So that uh, changes things a little bit. She said, yeah. And... Um, so what was happening is they weren't taking risks. You know, they were giving very conservative kind of by the book recommendations, which doesn't make you stand out as a consultant. You're just doing what every other consultant uh, does, going by the books. And so they weren't taking risks. And so she, um, I said, well, could you make a list of how could they take risks intelligently? And she did that. She made a list of what are all the ways and strategies you can use to roll the dice, but without gambling everything. And then we did a little bit of a map brainstorm. I said, what are the elements sort of at the root of that? And there were three of them. There was something about having a clear vision. There was something about the inner work and there was something about structure. But when I asked her, I said, what's the order of those? She said, well, the first is having a vision, you know, I suppose for your clients. The second is doing the inner work. A third is structure. I said, what do you mean by structure? because um, there's lots of things it could be. And she realized, as well as we talked to you, realized ago, she doesn't do all the structure. For example, she didn't do the marketing, the sales, the bookkeeping for these businesses that she was being brought in to help. But what she did want to do was time management and scaling, helping them scale. So you can see already how this is narrowing in a lot better. Um, and so I said, well, then if you do an intro presentation, and I recommend for most service providers that you do, um, or if you're interviewed, the fundamental thing you're making the case for is not for them to hire you, but making the case for a perspective or an approach, or in this case, the pyramid. You're making the case for you've got to start with the vision, then you've got to do this inner work, and then you've got to work on the structure. Now, what is meant really by vision, the inner work, and structure? A larger conversation, but uh, those were the elements at play. And what was interesting was that I said, where do the, the, all these limiting beliefs and self-sabotage you're talking about, where does that fit? It's like, oh, that's in the inner work, right? So it started off with uh, her saying, I work with people who self-sabotage, focusing on the inner thing. And yet in the approach and in the pyramid, the inner was the, the second piece of three, you know, vision, inner, and pyramid. So by the end, what we had was um, something a lot clearer. It's like, okay, so consultants, and I would say one of the consequences, of course, of not, of this um, self-sabotage, which translates as not taking risks, is you are aware that you are just a kind of being seen as a commodity, as a diamond dozen consultant. You're not getting a lot of the gigs. You're not getting the kind of gigs you want. Um, you're feeling constrained. You're feeling like, man, I'm really not telling the truth here. And so then so then their, their um, consulting practice is generic. So this could then be the title of the workshop is how to create an extraordinary consulting practice. You know, something unique and remarkable that you'd be really excited to share uh, where they really find their own voice and put it out. And I think that would have some legs. So we'll see, you know, long term, let's see if I hear back from them. But that was a uh, that was what came from that session. I just thought there were some gems in it worth sharing. So again, if somebody has if you have a diagnosis that your people are struggling with something, they don't know they're struggling with it, the key is then you say, okay, what would happen if that was true, if they were self-sabotaging in this area as a consultant, 
what does that look like? What are the symptoms of it? What are the consequences of all that? Because all of that gives you the title for your workshop, that gives you the, uh, the headline for your sales letter, gives you the, the bullseye to aim at in terms of the issue that you help people solve. So there you go. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, thank you so much for watching these videos. By the way, thank you to everyone who likes the page, subscribes, and shares these videos. It's a huge help. And if you'd like to get a, a broader sense of my point of view, uh, if it's your first time stumbling across my work, you can go to marketingforhippies.com. There's a ton of free stuff there, including a starter kit, which gives you the full footage of my day-long workshop, um, which I think you might enjoy. So I think that's it. Thank you so much.